Read along with me. And to get to, and then again the kingdom of heaven is lacking unto a treasure hidden in a field. The which when a man came to the field to buy the treasure, that's paraphrasing this thing now. Therefore, he goeth and said all that he has and buy the field. I want to compare these two parables together. See what we come up with, Brother Ronald. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking godly pearls, who, when he finds, who has found the pearls of great price, went and so all that he had and bought it all. Pray with me for a moment, will you please, God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we do thank you for your precious word. We do thank you, Lord, that you spoke to men in parables for a reason. And Lord, as you speak to man's hearts today, there's a reason you speak into these hearts. It's because you love them. A great price that was paid for mankind. That's our time here. If you open the word, that it will speak to our hearts and help us to be better people. We're going to thank you, love you, and praise you, Lord, for it's in your name we ask it. Amen. You may be seated. If it's, if it's the Lord's will, I won't be up here too long. I just want to tell you a story and what's going on and let you buy if you so desire. Uh, we want to look at this treasure, pearls, something of great value. Yeah. Jesus wanted us to understand. We'll never fully understand it, ladies and gentlemen, until so we get the glory. Amen. And he likened this thing on the great value. And the price he paid for the pearl. And I want you to follow along with me this morning, if you will. We're going treasure hunting. We like to go treasure hunting. Anybody like to go treasure hunting? What do you be looking for? Something of great value? More value than you have? Well, let's look at these parables and see what we can find out. Why would Jesus speak in a parable to begin with? What is a parable? Jesus spoke in parables that certain people could understand what was going on. Well, a parable, I'm going to uh, give you a definition of a parable. A parable is an earthly saying with a heavenly meaning. That's all it is. So, let's get on with the story. The treasure and the pearl. Who is the treasure? What is the pearl? How do we own this stuff? And they... The ones in whom the seed of the gospel. Yeah. What is the gospel? It's God's spoken word. That's the gospel. You can find it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can go even farther than that. You can start in Genesis and go all the way to Revelation and you get the gospel. You'll find it there. And I read it. Uh, now, I don't want to get too difficult here. I want to understand part of this myself. You say, well, you're trying to preach it. Listen, folks, let me tell you what the preacher tries to do is tell you what God said, not what I'm saying. I'm going to try to tell you what God says it is. Right. A parable. He spoke. Already we've been told. He went into a field. What was the field? What was he looking for? Now, ladies, let me say this before I get into this thing really deep. You ladies like jewelry, right? Some men like jewelry. You got this one pearl, but there's a greater one out there. What are you going to do? I'd like to have that. Well, if you like to have it, you make preparations to get it, right? Yeah. I'm not satisfied with this. I'll make preparation to get this one. It's more. Why do you want more? Because of its great value. Go ahead, bro. 
We want it because of its great value. Now, what I'm going to offer you this morning is the treasure itself. The treasure itself was not the pearl. The treasure itself is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We sail out and take him, and we got the treasure. Amen. That's the treasure we're looking at in the field. But anyway, let me move on. As we know in the beginning, the church started as a small, real, small seed. So it begins to grow, right? The mustard seed. Well, we're looking, let me go on. Jesus says when he found it, now we're talking about the parable. We're quoting what Jesus said. Now, listen with me. I don't want to lay down on this thing. I want to talk to you about Jesus Christ and the parable in the field. And first, in the beginning, it was small fruit. You know what happened to you? When God saved you in the beginning, it was a small thing to you. But what happened? This seed that was planted began to take nourishment. It began to grow, and it growed up. Then it? it growed up in our lives. That's what we're talking about. Jesus Christ grows us up, folks. He grows us up. Amen. He don't grow us down. He grows us up. Yeah. That we can be the people that he can use. That's the way it is. Jesus don't put us down, folks. He grows us up. Well, let's see what we can find in the field. The parable, the treasure, and the pearls. Like I said, you ladies like jewelry. And most people... Maybe not only jewelry. Let's say it's men. They like to hear, see something out there I'd like to have. Oh, I can what I got is good right now. But this is, looks better and it's nice. Well, I don't have the money to buy it, but let's make some arrangements. One, two. Let's go see the banker. See if we can get a loan to buy this thing. We want it. How bad do you want it? That's a good question, I think. And then it is joy. When he bought the field over with joy, Brother Carney, he found something that was precious. He found something that was priceless. It was a great price that he paid for it. What did he find? He wanted, it was a great, great value. Jesus says, when he found it, he did what? He hid it again. I want this for myself. Have you ever walked around in life and God, I got to have it for myself. If I can have it for myself, I got this great pearl. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to love him? Or are we going to serve him? That's what we're going to do. We find the treasure. Well, and then in his joy, went and said, all oh, that he sold all he had. Now, let me tell you what he sold. If you'll bear with me just a moment, I want to tell you what he sold. He was able to buy the field. We're talking about two different people. Pride, folks. He got rid of pride in my life. That's a big problem in our life. Pride. 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 He got rid of his pride. He got rid of his attitude. Now, you and I have attitudes. If you don't believe it, ask your husband, ask your wife. Your attitude ain't right today. We got attitudes towards each other. Do away with attitudes. Get rid of it. I don't have an attitude towards you. You do away with all that stuff. Well, dislikes. Sell out. You know, if you got something, if you got a bushel of corn, you sell that bushel of corn, you have nothing left, right? Bear, sell out, folks, sell out. Sell out all. In the second, there's a pearl. Now, we know there's a treasure, and there's a pearl. Now, let me tell you who the treasure is. The treasure that you and I found was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What the pearl? He was the treasure. Now, let me tell you where he found it at. He found it in the scriptures. I told you earlier, Genesis, all the way to the That's the field that we're searching in. Well, let me ask you a question. Why don't you and I, as God's children, go out and search the field? It's too much work. 
It's too much work. You know what you and I like to do? Let's open this and just look at it. There's great pearls in this thing. There's great chunks of gold in it. There's great institution in this book. We call it a Bible. But if you want to find the good, it's get in the book and read it and find out what's going on. Amen. You'll find great pearls. You'll find nuggets of gold in the book. You can't find it if it's closed. You know what the idea is about this thing about the field? The reason nobody liked the field? They walk by and kick the thing. This don't look like good bottom land, we would say, right? But sometimes the pearls, sometimes the gold is laying right on top of the ground. You need to go there and see if you can find it. Dig for it. We don't like to do that, do we? We just don't like to have us sit down and spend time in God's Word. You'll never find the nuggets till you get into the field and start digging. You'll never find them. So, what are we going to do? First of all, I want to sell out. This is something that precious that I got to have. When men, women, boys and girls come to a point in life where they say, I've got to have Jesus, things change. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, folks. When you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, your whole life will change. Amen. He'll change your life forever. It'll never be the same. Let's find. Let's go look. Let's go search. That the treasures hidden in the field. We are to compare the kingdom of heaven. All right. He said it's lacking according to this proverb. The parable he said is lacking unto heaven. Now, me and you sat down, you and I and other people sat down. We said, wonder what heaven is like. What is it like? We ain't been there. He said it was lacking unto what? A pearl. A pearl. I kind of did a little bit of story. They say a pearl, when it starts to form, it forms from a grain of sand. Really, really small. And it's an organism that grows. You know what it says it does to the oyster? It aggravates the oyster while it's growing. And I got to think, why would it aggravate if it's that precious? Aggravation will make us wonder what's going on, won't it? It will. So it aggravates the But it aggravates, it would aggravate this. If I can't sell out and get the feel, I'm not going to be happy. Let me tell you something, folks. Christian, sin of the life. Without God, you're not happy in this world. There's no peace and joy in your life. Without God, you say, oh, I'm having a good time. Amen. You do. But it's fake. Amen. It's not the real McCoy. Amen. This man had the real McCoy. He didn't have nothing fake. It was real. He had found Jesus Christ. And I don't know of anything any better in life when man says, I found Christ. He was lost. I don't know. You may seem to think those things better. But if it is, Curly hasn't run across it. Let me say that to you. That the treasure's hidden in the field. We are compared to the kingdom. The kingdom was small at the beginning. But it grows. It's kind of like a plant. The kingdom of God is like a plant. One day it's going to reach maturity. You say, I don't understand that. One day this thing we call the church is going to reach maturity and it's gone. Maturity. Well, and we'll be a portion for us in the fullness of God. You ever think about the fullness of God, what it's really like? Now, don't y'all go to sleep on me. I'm going to get you there. I'll get you out of here in a little bit. That's the fullness of God, when we have access to the fullness of God, we have it all. Now, why? Why in the world are we so down and out? This is happening in my life. You know, if you notice when things are growing, different things happen. And I'm not a gardener. Now, don't misunderstand. My wife's the gardener. I help her, but she gets it done. We find the seed, we find the nuggets, we find the gold, we find the field, we know what the field is. Let's go searching for it. Want to? 
Let's go see what it is. And in the gospel, ordinance, it is hidden as, look, it's so hidden, it's like the milk in the breast. You don't see the milk in the bread. If you open the book, you don't see what's there. You got to look in there and dig. Open the bread, there. You don't see the milk, right? <laughs> and, the, and the gospel's like a honeycomb. You see a honeycomb up there, right? But you don't see the honey in the comb. Why? It's hidden. But if you open the comb, what do you see? What do you see? You see the honey. You see the honey in the honeycomb. If you dig a well and cover it up, it fills up with water. You don't see the water. Take the lid off of it. Reach down there and get you a cool, cool drink of water. That's the gospel. It's hidden from men. You say, well, I got the Bible. If you want the nuggets, get into the Bible and read it and see what it has to say. Amen. If you want it. Sometimes we just don't have that desire. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't want to spend that time find the nuggets it is hidden it's not really hidden if you open the book but it's hidden you know why it's hidden okay. let me just show you why it's hidden what do you see you just see a cover if you open it up there's something inside it's kind of make you think about Christmas, Brother Gerald. We see the present. We don't see nothing in it. We get in there and start opening this thing. We find some nuggets. We find something. Okay. Let me see if I can move on. Y'all want to go to lunch, I'm sure. I'm trying to give you something to eat today or to feast on, but that's all right. We'll move on. And the garden. And the garden. You know, I like hidden things. I like to, I like to be a treasure hunter. Ain't got sense enough to be a treasure hunter except in this book. Treasure, they find great treasures. It makes them happy. Let me tell you what happens with this book. When you find the great treasures in it, it may bring joy. It brings peace. It brings happiness in your life when you found it. I search, you know, I've heard this. I've searched and I, now I got here and this, it just opens up like a door. I didn't never see this before. Why hadn't you seen it before? Let me tell you why you hadn't seen it. You hadn't spent time in there looking for it. You hadn't spent time looking for it. That's happening in the church today. Let me tell us something, folks. What's happening in the church today, the reason, one reason the church is not flourished, we'll not get in there and see what kind of nuggets we can find. Amen. That's one reason we're not growing. Amen. Now, the church, it is growing, but not like it should. You know, and you, uh, if us as farmers, we were children and farm. If you wanted something to grow, what did you do? Put nourishment there, and then you get the full bloom of all of that. God, if you want God to really bless you, get there and spend it again. Lord, I'm in Your Word here now. I, I need to know this. Help me to find these nuggets. And you know why he's looking over his shoulder, Brother Brown, saying, well, if you look right there, you'll see what this is. God will help you find the nuggets. Amen. It's like a great, look, the thing, it's so great that man just cannot estimate the price of this pearl. It is that great, it is that rich, and so worthless. Not unworthy, but so much worth to it. If you had the available resources about you never get enough to buy this pearl. You never get enough. A great price. And the great thing about it is you couldn't buy it anyway. The great thing about it is it's offered to you free. You can't buy it. You can't buy it. It's offered to you. God said, come. How did he tell us to come? How did he tell us to come? As we are, just as you are, and I'll take care of the rest. God will clean you up. He'll clean you up. Can't buy it. Salvation is free. You can't buy it. God gave us life that you could have it. Well, the reason why so many slights the gospel because they look 
only at the surface. Only at the surface of the field. And judge by that and see no excellence in the Christian life. What are we looking for in the Christian life? Jesus Christ. He's the author. And what? The finish of my faith in yours. Jesus Christ. Let me say this to you. I'm going to move on. I got to move on and get y'all out of here. Isn't it? Said I'm ready to go to lunch. That's okay. Let's eat some good food. Yes, to the above. Those Christianity is greater than any philosophy you'll ever hear. Philosophers try to tell us what, how to live in the world we're living in. The Bible tells us how to live in the world in which we're in as Christians. As Christians. It'll tell us how to live. Amen. So, well, let's move on. The may the riches mind often those that spine right above the surface. Good ground. A lot of people say, oh, we need some good bottom ground. Well, it may be good. It may look good, brother, but it may not be good. Not so much is hidden from the field, much has come up to the price. Now, look, it's available. Salvation is available to everybody. Here's the, here's the question. Are we willing to pay the per term or come up to the term and pay the price? Are we willing to do that? Those are prices you've got to pay to get the field. And you know it's real simple. It ain't much. The price ain't very much. It's the price is we accept him. That's the only price that you and I got to pay. That's the only price. We accept it. All right, let me move on. Those are the reasons we need to accept Jesus Christ. He resolved to buy the field and embrace the gospel offer upon. He come to realization, I can come to terms with Jesus Christ. I'll make the offer and I'll buy the field. Let me say this. I think I said it made the... Listen, folks, listen to courage. When you encounter God, I told you earlier, life will change forever. Amen. But you've got to come in to an encounter. <clears throat> Let him be ruler of your life. Well, let me get on. He resolved to buy the field. He come to the conclusion, listen, you and I, every one of us, somewhere in our life, past, present, and maybe in the future, we come to a realization that we need God in our lives. We recognize that we needed him. It was time to buy the field. I'm going to sell out everything I got, and I'm going to buy the field. When we recognize that, that's what happens in our lives. It changes us. It changes the way of thinking. Amen. It changes the way of walking. Yeah. It changes the way of talking. It changes your way how you see people. Amen. It's a total change come in encounter with God. And some of us remember that when that happened. And they make it their own. I'm making my own now. And you say, well, how you own God? God made you his own, and you become part of him. So, are the unseen treasures. It is in, the unseen treasure is in Jesus Christ. That's the unseen treasures. You've never seen him what we know is a treasure in the gospel that we are to have an eye to towards God and the gospel. And the gospel. The gospel that we have an eye to. We need not, we need not listen. Listen, I want you to get this statement and I, 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 I'll try to help on this. Listen, we need not Go to heaven. Listen, let me read it for you. What I got down here. We need not go up to heaven, but Christ in the word is nigh unto us. You understand? Get that? We need not go to heaven to find the treasure. We find it in his word. It's nigh unto you. How nigh is it? As close as this book is to you. That's how close he is. The book, the Bible, and the 
for the great prize. All the children of men are busy seeking godly pearls. Let me tell you what will happen. Let me tell you what will happen. If you find that pearl, a godly pearl, you won't find it on earth. If you find a good one in the jewelry store, guess what? Brothers and sisters, if you find it and purchase it, and God says tonight, it's time for you to leave, what you gonna do? You're gonna leave the pearl. It'll stay right here. But if you buy the godly pearl, it'll be right there with you now and all the way to close. It'll be all the way there waiting. Amen. Buy it. Buy it. Give your life to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One. By riches, listen. By riches. We talk about that. So, you know, so and so is a rich man, or this woman's a rich. But how rich are they? Material things. I told my class this morning you can be the richest person in the world. And God says, Today's the day. You're going to leave it here. Every bit of whatever it is. Somebody else will get to use it, Brother Bruce. You won't get, but you're going to lay up treasures in heaven. And the only way to lay up treasures in heaven is to seek God and do what God wants you to do and be the kind of servant God wants you to do. You'll have no treasures in heaven unless you know Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. They won't be there. So, treasures. There's a counterfeit treasure out there. You know that? There's a counterfeit treasure out there, and we've got a name for him. He's got many names. He's counterfeit. And people are trying to get that pearl, and they're trying so hard, they're giving their life to him for riches. I'm talking riches that's going to pass with them. I tell you, buy this pearl. Buy the treasure. Take the treasure. Use the treasure, and you'll have treasures in heaven when you get there. Now I'm going to get there. Don't know when. I don't know when I'm going to get there. But I'm going to get there. And I can't tell you what heaven is like. John tried to tell us what heaven is like. He couldn't do it in the book of Revelation. We have no what it's like when we get there. Jesus likened it unto this. He didn't say this is what it's going to be. He likened it unto that. How great is this treasure? Man has never been able to tell you how great this treasure is. I can say it's great. How great is it? It's so great that men, women, boys, and girls has grasped this thing we call Jesus Christ, this person, and they're hanging on. They're hanging on. That's how great it is. And we'll see that greatness one day. If we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we'll see that greatness, how great he is. We'll see the very marks in his hands when he's hanging on Calvary. We'll see the marks in his feet. But yet, it's a perfect pearl. You can't mess with it. We don't mess with a perfect pearl because if you mess with a perfect pearl, it becomes unperfect. We'll get to see Jesus. Well, let me finish up here. I don't need to lay down on this. Jesus Christ is a pearl of great price, a jewel which will make thee. Who has it? Now, I said, who has it? Who has it? It's rich. It's truly rich. Rich towards God and having him. We have enough. Listen, we say we don't never get enough. I'll share something with you. We have enough. To make us happy here and forever. He's not talking about materialistic things. He's talking about we have enough, and enough is Jesus Christ. If we got Jesus, you got it all. There's nothing left. You got it all. Jesus Christ is the pearl of great price. Now, let me ask a question, and it may be not be the right question to ask, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. You and me that knows Jesus as Lord and Savior, would you give up what you have now for something you had in the past? I wouldn't. 
Ain't no way I'm giving up Jesus. He may give me up, but I'm sure going to hang on. Amen. That's all I got. That's all you got. You say, oh, I got you. Oh, wait a minute. Jesus, all you got. He said, if you got me, you don't need nothing else because all this other will be taken care of. Well, let me make this statement. To make us happy. Have enough to make us happy and forever. Okay? True spiritual merchants. True now that finds this pearl of great price. Though, even so, dear to us. A spiritual merchant. We don't look for counterfeits, do we? No good to you. you know, it, it looks good, but it's a counterfeit. Don't you want the real McCoy? That's a good word. Dude. Don't we want what's real? You know, I want what's going to stand by me now. I want what's going to stand by me in eternity. And what I'm going to offer you and say to you and me today is the only thing you can get that's going to do that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's here today. He'll be here tomorrow. And guess what? He's going to be in all eternity. So, let me shake that. A man may buy gold, but you can't buy the pearl. It's not for sale. It's not for sale, ladies and gentlemen. It's free. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the message today. And if you happen to not have a relationship with God, through His Son, Jesus Christ. We want to invite you to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's as simple as the ABCs. If you would admit that you are a sinner and that you are in need of a Savior and believe that God sent His very Son, Jesus Christ, to come to this earth to be the sacrifice for our sins and that He died for our sins and He arose on the third day, and then if you would confess Him as your Lord and Savior, you can be saved. You must believe this with all your heart. And you must be willing to serve Him. If you are, all you have to do is talk with Jesus. You don't need a preacher. You don't need a church to get saved. But if you get saved, find yourself a Bible-believing church. And I believe God will richly bless you.